Hi, olá, welcome, bem-vindo to Olivia's Yarn Stories, or Conchi com Olivia. This is episode six of my little YouTube channel where I vlog my yarn makes. I'm a crocheter and I'm a knitter and an overall obsessed collector of yarn. And thank you for rejoining me here today. And for those of you who may be new, uh, just a very quick little piece about me. I am in the South Coast of Massachusetts. I am a librarian by day and in all of my spare time I will have yarn in hand. If I'm sitting I'm either knitting or crocheting as most of you probably are. So today's episode I have a crocheted finished item. I have a long whip finely finished knitted item. I have a knitted item that's been gifted. I don't have it with me, so I'll be showing you pictures of that. I've got my May socks finished to show you, and I've got a shawl that was also a whip the last time we spoke, and it's been finished. If these things are of interest to you, um, thank you for sticking along with me here as I um, wax on about my makes. Um, I always forget to say this. I am Olivia30 on Ravelry, and you can find me as Olivia30M on Instagram, where I'm, I'm pretty active on there. You'll be able to see a lot of my makes there, as well as a lot of my personal photos. I don't have a separate, um, I don't have a separate Instagram account for my yarn makes and my um, daily life. I, it's just easier for me. I'm not sharing anything that I wouldn't want anybody to see. So uh, you're welcome to find me over there and see what my adventures have been both real adventures and yarn ventures as well. So um, let's talk about my recent make, which has been a whip for a while. And I'm wearing it, and I don't know if I'll be able to keep it on the whole time because it has gotten a little warm. I do have my windows open. I am recording today from my bedroom um, where I keep my books, some of my precious yarn, including more here, um, where it's it's in a in a safe place and away from Gary because Gary has been known to try to knit with Mo here. So it's now kept in a place where he can't get to. And, um, but I do have my windows open and that's why if you hear uh, noises, we do live in a relatively quiet street, but um, I don't know, sometimes a car will come by or a helicopter will fly over. So if you hear those noises, you know where it's coming from. Because uh, it did turn out to be an, a beautiful warm day today. I wasn't anticipating it, but here it is. So. And just as I'm talking and right on cue, there's somebody coming home. Um, so what am I wearing? So I am wearing the fletching, which has been a work in progress for a while. It's finished. I'm happy it's finished. It's been a, a work in progress for way too long. It, I don't know if I am just cut out to do color work. It's been, if you saw my last episode and the episode before that, you saw how much I've been talking about this thing. So I'm not going to talk about all of the challenges. I'm just going to say that it's finished and I, um, I'm just not cut out for color work. I really am not. Besides the mistake, I, uh, well, I should stop by saying I went for it to be a tea look because I underestimated the amount of yarn that I had in the basket. This gray heather, I thought I had enough, um, enough skeins to do the full sleeve. And the last time you saw this piece, I did have the sleeve done all the way to the cuff. And I believe it was the right sleeve. And I did take it back because I didn't have enough for the body. So I thought, well, no problem. I'll add to the body and I will make it a T. But as you can see, the issue is when I blocked it, look at how big it is. The, the yoke, and I, I knew this about this yarn already. I'm using the uh, Cloudborn, Cloudborn Highland Sport. And this is the color Gray Heather. I had used this yarn for a scarf and I already knew that it was gonna grow. But you know how it is when you're still working on it and you're looking at it and you're thinking, oh, it's not, it's not gonna, it's gonna be tight, it's gonna be this, it's gonna be that. 
and that's what I thought. And of course I block it and this is what happened. So anyway, I thought I had enough yarn in the gray, but the reason I thought I had enough yarn was because at the bottom of the basket where I kept this yarn, I had two other skeins, but it was the taupe. And inside the basket, the taupe looked gray. Um, so when I did a quick head count of how much yarn I had, I miscalculated. Um, but I did still have one full skein left of the um, teal color. I don't think it's called teal. It's called, I forgot what it's called. Lagoon. It's called Lagoon. Um, and I played around with the idea of doing extra color work on the sleeves and on the hem to um, increase the amount of gray yarn I had. I did reach out to a couple of, um, I did reach out via Ravelry to some knitters that had some in stash that they were willing to trade or sell. I did get one response and I did get one ball of yarn. Um, but the others that I reached out to like three or four, I never heard back. So I didn't want to wait any longer. I just wanted to finish this item. So I went with just finishing it all in gray and took what I had done of the sleeve out, added to the bottom and thinking, okay, why don't I just try the color work? But given all of the headaches I'd already had with this color work, I just didn't want to do it. I really didn't want to do it. So I'm happy with the length. It, I have plenty of ease on it. But it's so big and the sleeves, they looked fine before blocking. They were sort of up to here, um, which was perfect when I tried it on before blocking. I thought, all right, that works. But as you can see with the blocking, it, it just, oh yeah, and pardon the knitter's tan. I was knitting outside, so I was knitting this way. So my tan, <laughs> it's, it's got, I got a funny tan line there. Um, so yeah, that's the story with this one. I, I just don't know anymore. Yeah. I don't know. Like I said, I already it already has its own design element, and now it's so long. I I will take the sleeves back and and just take a few rows and um, give it the the real. Or maybe those other people on Ravelry will eventually read my message and send me another skein of the gray, and I will make it full sleeves. Because the once it was made as a full sleeve, it fit nicely i like the look of it even though this is sort of loose here something about the sleeve as it tapered down made it look all right but as you can see it's i what are your thoughts it's yeah it's just not oh it's gonna end up being something that is gonna go in the camper where i can just wear with jeans at the campgrounds and not worry you know, I think I mentioned that in the last episode that when there's something that I make that I, I'm not that thrilled with, I don't worry about it. I turn it into something that I put in the camper so I can wear it. And I might try to make it again. I don't know. I, I am just, I don't know if it was the yarn, if it was trying to do this at night. I, it just was not one of my successful makes at all. So, hey. I don't know what else to say about it, <laughs> except that it's done and it's a finished garment. I'm going to count it as a finished garment, but I'm not exactly very thrilled with it. Um, so that's my fletching, which is now a T for my wardrobe.
for a minute. I'm just going to do a little outfit change because I'm getting a little warm wearing this. And I'm going to put something else on um, that we will be talking about later on the archives. I almost forgot to show you now that I took it off. I forgot to show you uh, just how much I had left over in this make. I had exactly that much left over in the yarn of the gray to finish the hem. So I thought I had won it yarn chicken. I guess I did, but I guess I could have gone and had a little bit more used from the sleeve uh, for the bottom, but I think the length on the bottom is fine. I just need to do something about these sleeves. So we'll put it here and have our little costume change. All right, I'm back. I changed it to something a little less warm <laughs> so we can talk about the other crochet finish that I have, which you know I've put the fletching back on there. And this is the uh, Franny Granny Pullover by Hannah Cross. It is a crocheted granny stitch garment. And you, um, I'll put some photos here of me wearing it and doing a little photo shoot in my backyard, which um, thank you to the sun for giving me such a beautiful filter on Friday afternoon as I was doing my little uh, photo shoot in my backyard. It came out really, really um, perfect on me. I, I think this one um, made up for my frustration with that one. I actually finished that one yesterday and I gave it a good, a quick dry, I should say. I, I had it on the blocking mat and I had a fan blowing on it so that it could dry so that I could wear it for today's podcast. And um, yeah, I'm going to get over the disappointment on that one because I've got this one. This one made me feel so much better. Um, when I look at it, I can't wear it because it's so warm. And if I put it on now, I'll be like, oh. Um, but anyway, um, so this has worked out beautifully. I, I love this one. I see myself making more of these. I think, um, oh, and by the way, notice my my earrings. I had worn different earrings with this top. Um, but the same similar style, which are made by a friend of mine, Erica. She makes these earrings and I love them. And this one that I'm wearing now, I wear a lot because it matches with so many of my colors and it's matching with the top that I have on. And I just love them. Um, and uh, she's got a Facebook page and I'll link that below if any of you are interested in looking up her earrings. She's very talented. So this top, as I was saying, it is worked up with little granny squares at the top. And then you do the crocheted body and then you split for sleeves, then you, you do, you can do your sleeve. I did that. I did my sleeves. There's so many options on how to do this. The pattern is unbelievable with the amount of, of options you have for how you create these sweaters. I chose to go with a fitted sleeve versus the balloon sleeve. And so it starts with these little squares at the top for your, your yoke. And you do the body, you do the sides and then you do your uh, v-neck which i did mine a little different from the pattern uh, the pattern has you start in a different spot but i couldn't wrap my brain around how to do the ribbing that way so what i did was i just picked it up here at the center i did the ribbing and then i closed it back off here and just sewed it shut so instead of having a true v-neck it's a sewn v-neck but it, it worked, it worked for me. What did I do in the pattern that wasn't? I mean, the, the designer says you can, you can make it your own. What I forgot to do was if you slip stitch here, it would have given you more definition on the top. And I didn't do that. I went right into, once I had the squares, it is getting a little blown out, but it's, it's like a sea foamy green. Um, so anyway, the, the way it worked, it, 
it was just worked so nicely I just kept going with it so how I did it so I should show you first this is so this is the pattern I'm talking about this is Hannah this is her Hannah cross so that's what I had seen and then I saw this one so that's what I was going for was this look and it is um yeah it worked out beautifully uh, i love that how it works is you start with these squares and then you make these half granny squares which when you attach and she gives you the whole schematic on how to attach it and how to give you the shape when you attach them it gives you that yoke style and what I did was, and why I use this yarn, which is, this is Amigo 100% uh, acrylic yarn that I had in stash. And the story behind this is, I just wanted to see if I could figure out the construction of how to put it together, because it was a little different than the last one that I just made, where you're just granny stitching all the way around this one, because they had the squares, I wasn't sure how it would work. So I figured, well, I had this in stash, let me try it. And as I'm trying this, you know, my friend Erica had come out with earrings that matched it perfectly. And I thought, okay, I'll just make the whole top in this color because I can always make another one. So yeah, for her other earrings, which I, I've got them aside, but they're similar shape, but they're in this color. Um, so I made this top to go with her earrings. And by in doing the square, I said, well, I want to make sure that I have, because I'm trying to learn my lesson and making sure that I have gauge, which by the way, I did have gauge with that one on the yarn. I was very careful to make sure I had gauge and it still, still didn't work for me. So anyway, the pattern does tell you what your gauge should be on your square. So I was going for the size large and I did have my three and a half inches. Um, so I was spot on. The only thing for me is I think I am, um, I'm a much tighter crocheter. So when I assemble the squares into the piece, I think I'm tighter at my stitching technique. So it ended up um, possibly being a little bit less ease on it than was suggested on the pattern, but it, it's fine for me. Cause again, with acrylic, when you wear it and it softens up and it gets warm, it tends to stretch out a little bit and I'm fine with it. So what else can I tell you about this? Hannah Cross, you're a genius. This is fantastic. I think I am going to give this one a try next. The reason why I didn't do this one was because I had just finished using the Sirdar Jewel Spun in the last crocheted garment. And that's what she uses for this one. But I'm so tempted to make another one. But at the same time, I have to ask myself, how many Granny Square projects do you really need? And are you gonna wear them all? This is my fourth or fifth one already, but we'll see. I mean, it works up really fast and it might be something I can make and gift. So that's my Granny Franny pullover. So what's next? Do we talk about our other finishes or do we talk about this? I think we'll talk about this because I'm wearing it. It's comfortable. I love it. This is the Olive Branch Tee. Oh, and I can't remember the designer's name. I'll put it here on the screen. I made three of these last year. Three and a half. I, um, yeah, I'll start by showing you my um, gauge swatch for this top. I, um, as usual, I don't like to gauge swatch, although I'm learning now that I should, because if I'm going to be a proper podcaster, if I'm going to be confessing to things not coming out right, it shouldn't be because I didn't gauge correctly, right? So I did, I didn't do, I didn't do a gauge for this top. And that's why I, this is my 
two and a half <laughs> because the first one had to be set aside. The second one came out better. The third one, perfect. And then I made the fourth, my fourth attempt or third completed one. I made it as a gift. So here is my gauge swatch for this top. You ready? It's a teeny tiny, teeny tiny, <laughs> teeny tiny olive branch tea. I, I just thought, you know, I think I know the size. So I think it's, and the thing is, I forgot I had this. I had made another one in this color and I've gifted it and it's been worn and it is on my Ravelry page. It is on my Instagram page, but I'll put a picture here. I did make another one and I gifted it because uh, when I was working on this at work, she admired the color of it, which is the same person that I'm going to talk about in a little while with a balaclava gift that I made for her. So when I started the second one, I didn't bother to take this one apart. I just started another with another the skin because I do have a whole ball of the yarn. And I believe this is, this was Hobby Lobby yarn that I picked up because there had been a clearance on them and I wanted to try and see how it worked up for a garment. And it worked up beautifully. I'm pretty sure this is Hobby Lobby yarn that I picked up. So, um, yeah, so what I had done was I folded this and I put it in the bottom of the whip basket and forgot all about it. And I did, and I tell you that the whip basket keeps growing. Well, I decided to organize it and that's where I found this. I said, oh my goodness, I have a whole other top that I have to decide what I'm going to do with this thing. So my first attempt at the olive branch tee, too small. My second attempt, perfect size for her to wear it. She has that as a gift. The next attempt was mine which is perfection <laughs> i just love this it fits beautifully it is so comfortable and this is what i have left of the yarn this uh, nugget of yarn this is primrose yarns old sailor suit i believe it is and i had picked up this at with good yarns um, she had it there and I thought wow this blue is absolutely beautiful it does look like an old tailor old sailor suit doesn't it so yeah that's what this is so olive branch tea which was inspired by Sophie of cozy meadow knits I've been watching Sophie for a while and last summer she talked about this and that she had made it and of course I had to and it's, I think in one of my episodes, I've mentioned how sometimes I get obsessed with making something and I'll make two or three of. This is definitely one of my threes. So the Olive Branch Tea, and I, I should have made a note as to who the designer was. Love it. It's from the archives. It's what I'm wearing now because it's comfortable. And see, it's perfect. Perfect sleeve size fits great and I'm going to use this as my template for that one I'm going to see just how many rows I had here to, to see if I can get it to match what I have on this one so that's the story with my olive branch tea and highly recommend the pattern super easy the lace work is easy to get through and um yeah, you end up with a beautiful item done. And it took me, so I had two skeins of it and I had this much left. So I, there was plenty of yarn. The, I believe it was with a size six needle. So it worked out really well. And I don't, I'm not wearing anything underneath in terms of a tank top. So it's, it, the density of it was, was good. The third ones that I made was made and gifted as well to a friend of mine and I, here's her picture wearing it. I made it for her using Fiber Hustle yarn in the colorway Whales Tracks. And 
this is how much I've got left from hers. I could have gone a little longer, uh, but she did want it to be waist length and not as long. I tend to like hip bone, but she asked for it to be waist length. So hers went to her measurement desire. And um, yeah, and she wears little white slacks and it looks great. She's another very knit worthy friend. And so yeah, so those are my three. It's the one that Amy has, the one that I have, and the one that Deb has. And the half is the one that I've got here that I'm gonna repurpose for something. So let's talk about what I give to, to, to Amy with the balaclavas, which I don't have. I'll be putting pictures of it here. If you remember from the last episode, I was making her balaclava using the Sirdar Chunky Yarn. And I did finish it. But she's a tiny little thing and she has a tiny little head and it came out really large for her. So I told her that it could be her snowstorm balaclava and not her fashionable one. And I made her another one. And then the next one, I made it with um, Cascade, Cascade 220. Cascade 220 Heathers is what I used. Oh, sorry, I shook you. I always forget that. And it was color 812, which is sand or does it sand? But again, in the, in the beige tones, which is colors that she likes, as you can see from the top. And so with this four weight yarn, it came out perfect on her. I haven't gotten her to give me a picture of it yet because she wants to do this whole photo shoot with it wearing her jacket, but now it's gotten so warm, so she hasn't done it yet. But I did take a photo using it so that I could have it just in case I don't get her photo. And it came out perfect. It just, now I, if somebody ever asked me to make one, I won't hesitate. The first one I made, I made it per pattern as the designer has and as a, the YouTube tutorial has it. But for the second one, because I already knew the concept of how to do it, I made my own modifications. All of it's on my Ravelry page if you want to go there to look at it. The designer has it so that you cast off 90 stitches for the face part. I cast off 100 to give it a little bit. I didn't want it to be so closed in. And the other modification I made is the designer has you weave in waist yarn so you could see your pearl bumps for when you pick up around the face. I'll cut out the face, the hood, <laughs> the words, the hood part. I didn't, I'm, I'm experienced enough of a knitter that I know how to pick up stitches when I fold over a brim for the hat. I'm not sure if I'm explaining that right, but anyway, I didn't follow that part. It's, it is a YouTube tutorial. It can be a little confusing when she's explaining how to do that. You could totally bypass that part if you're a comfortable knitter who can pick up stitches that you, um, from, from the cast on piece. I've done socks where I've had to do a pico edge, so I, I'm already used to folding over the brim, the brim. So I've done the pico edge where I've folded over the cuff and I've picked up the stitches to keep going for the sock. And it was sort of similar that way. Um, totally doable if you have some experience picking up stitches. So I, I do recommend the pattern. It, it is a free YouTube tutorial. And it's, yeah, you can follow it along, but it, it did come out really nice. And if I ever get pictures from her, I'll, in the future, I'll, I'll post them and say, look from the archives. This is the balaclava that I made and gifted to someone who's very worthy of my yarn makes because she wears them and she loves them. And I'm always very happy to give it to her. And that's, let me see. So we talked about the two sweaters. We talked about the balaclava. We talked about how Olivia is a total failure at <laughs> gauge swatching. <laughs> we talked about the olive branch tees. So let's see what's left. Well, let's talk about um, the scarf that is finished. Um, 
again, if you are following me on Instagram, you would have seen that I wore this. It is going to be a gift, but I decided to wear it. It is the Fiber Seed Sprout Sock Lavender and Oak Hitchhiker that I made to gift for my sister. Her birthday is at the end of June, so this will be her birthday gift. It is done. And it did go with me to Nashville. I did wear it. Um, I will wash it. I will freshen it up for her. And she will get a brand new spanking new scarf as a birthday present. So this is one of my most favorite patterns to make for scarves. I have several. I have them in red, cranberry. I think I've made about four or five of these. And I just love, 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 love how it fits and wears. And it gives you... You know, you've got your little points here. And it, it goes over like that. And it's just... Look at how pretty that is. The yarn worked out beautifully on this. I know it was for intentional color pulling, but the color pulling I got on here was fantastic. And it's all garter. It's very, it's just lightweight, it's squishy, and it just, it looks fantastic. So I highly, highly, highly recommend this pattern. <laughs> Have I said that enough? And yeah, one skein. And I, as I said, it was, it's, Lavender and Oak um, by Fiber Seed Sprout Sock. It was, let's see, 510 yards. That's what I've got here. I, I had, I worked it so that I had just like a little bit left over because I just wanted to use up all the yarn. And uh, look at that. Doesn't that look pretty? So that's. And let's see, last finish make. Let us do the socks, which is the socks for the April socks. No, I already did the April socks. This is the May socks. This is the finished May socks. And it'll sort of look familiar to you, but it is using the same yarn from last month, but it is a vanilla, a shorty vanilla sock. On these it is um and with intention that i used up all of the yarn so that i could have these um these will be for my son the other ones were for my husband who has been wearing them because it has been chilly still well up until to the last couple of days it had been chilly and so these will be for the sun and they're just they're just vanilla but i did get them to match pretty well. I did use, um, I think I've got a little bit left over. I used this navy blue mystery mini that I have for the, for the cuff on this one, for the, for the heel, which is, uh, my go-to is always the slip, slip heel. Is that what you call it? <laughs> the traditional heel, slip knit. Heel. It fits his foot really well and he likes this texture. So your traditional heel heel and flat. And toes in blue. And the yarn that I used was the Lion Brand Mani Petty, which I had in stash. I bought it from a local clearance shop here, but he really likes this yarn on his feet. I've made other socks with this yarn for him. And as I said before, I don't mind making him yarn socks. I It's easy for me to make him socks in big box store yarn because he'll throw it in with his jeans when he does his laundry. And this way, if they fall apart or because he wears them until they fall apart, it's easy for me to throw it away because I know I didn't invest $30 
on a pair of socks for him. These were $2.99 a ball, so $6 for these. Well, not even $6. I would say $3 because Dad already got the other portion. This is what I've got left from the two balls. So again, my whole thing lately has been to do items and finish with intention for the yarn so that I don't have a lot still sitting in the baskets. So yeah. So the, this is for the year of socks 2024. Uh, Mal that I'm participating in. Oh, we'll stop. June socks next. And they won't be in this color. They're going to be a different color. So those are my finished makes. I didn't bring up any of my whips. And I don't think I'm going to talk about my whips here. Maybe I'll add something at the end afterwards. So let's talk about, oh, I do have my whips over there. Should I go get them? Should I get them? I'm going to get them. Give me a second. They're right over here. What do I have here? Let's see. Uh -huh. That's what I have. All right. This is what I am planning to do next, which is the crochet project. It is a moonlit shawl. This shawl is done. Um, it's a Sandra Paul pattern. And I had seen it made um, we tr Tracy of Woolen Wishes podcast had made hers and it was beautiful and I knew I had this in my ra uh, Ravelry library so I printed it out and I'm going to give it a try I have not started it but it's all kitted up I've got it in my bag which this is the one that I had bought at New England Fiber Fest or Fiber Fest of New England and I can't recall the person is that makes these bags but it, it's perfect for a skein of yarn and the yarn that I have caked up and I've got the hook in here for and it is oh, it's a little jumbled up okay it's a little messed up from being crossed around the whole thing okay pardon the side conversation here <laughs> Anyway, the yarn that I have is um, Ken Yarn, and it is Ken Yarn Aurora Fingering, and, I, and the color is 3BM, and it has these, um, it's got some of this white, it's, got, it's white, and uh, it may end up being a sign pulling yarn, I'm not sure. I have planned to use it for a pair of socks for the husband. But then I thought, no, I'm going to try and see how it works out for this shawl. And this is what I have. It's not much. But, whoops. If you think about crochet, you can just pick up the crochet stitch again. And this is what I have started. I'm not quite sure how it's going to work up. How it's going to look with those little itty bits of white. So I'm not sure. I, I'm going to do a few more rows. I, I think that's why I stopped because I wasn't sure about that. I'm going to do a few more rows. Then I'm going to try knitting it and see how it works up knitting and comparing it. Because if it were, if this yarn works up better to be knit, I'll be making another hitchhiker in this color for me because I don't have a black scarf. So because with crochet, you use up a lot more yarn for the stitch than you do with knitting. So we'll see. We'll see how this one works out for the next episode. I'll let you know how this worked out. And what else do I have here for a whip? Oh, yeah. See, what I did was I grabbed, I'm, I need to finish these whips. And so I grabbed this one. I forgot already what this one was. I don't. I think I showed any of you this. I started working on this when we went to the Grand Canyon in September. 
it's it was my birthday cast on in September and I was at the Grand Canyon so I cast this on it's this is a beautiful yarn by Hugh Loco and it screamed Grand Canyon to me when I saw it I bought it at Skein Yarn Shop and when I saw it I just had to I just had to have it it is and the colorway is yes I Canyon it's a Hugh Loco yarn it's a Philip Phyllis sock see I Canyon and the reason why I stopped working on it is, it is, I'm just working, it was the simple shawl. Because I thought the yarn was so pretty, it deserves just a simple shawl. But I stopped working on it because it, I wasn't happy with how my yarn overs were working up. I was off on a couple of them. And I know, I know it's going to be a shawl. It's going to be around my neck and it won't matter. But I was getting smaller yarn overs. It's hard to show on here. I was getting smaller. Let me do it here. Smaller yarn overs. And it, it just, so I don't know if I missed a couple of rows. So anyway, that's why I put it aside. Because I have to think about this one for a minute. I might want to use this for something else. But yeah, I mean, it, it will go like this. So you're not really going to see if the yarn overs are off. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how, what I decide to do with this one. And of course, I just, I just lost stitches. Let me just put them back here. You know, once upon a time, I used to panic <laughs> when stitches fell off the needles. Now, what? there it is. I'm back on the needles. So yeah, those are my whips. We'll see how these progress. I'm not sure. I'm not exactly very motivated on these two. Maybe that's why. I have them at the top of the pile now. So I can figure out what I'm going to do with them. All right. Those are the whips. So the last thing that we'll talk about is um, the project that I have in mind to start soon. So let me just do a little bit of life stuff here, which is I'm three weeks away from going away on vacation to Portugal, to Porto. And I am counting down I'm so excited about going it it's been a trip that my husband has been wanting to do for a long time because he wants to go to yarn he wants to go to yarn country <laughs> he wants to go to wine country I want to go because of the yarn we're going to be doing it for his birthday we'll be spending uh, a little over four we're going to be there about five days in uh, the Doro Valley but I am going to have an opportunity to go to Knitting with Friends, which is a yarn festival there in Porto, which I'll probably go on the Sunday because uh, the Saturday is his birthday. So it's the day is, is set aside for him. And I was thinking, wh what will I bring with me on this trip? Since I've already worn my sister's scarf to go to Nashville, I wanted to wear a new one. Um, I have several of scarves but I've worn them all so I wanted to wear something new well I was watching the Nitty Stew podcast and I saw her talking about a scarf that she made because she saw someone on a flight um, that she calls three delta uh, wearing a scarf that looked phenomenal for traveling um, and so what I did was I had to look it up and yeah I'm gonna do it too because I want to be three I want to be three Delta as well. <laughs> I'm, we're at the back of the plane. I'm not going to be number three. But um, wherever I land, I want to try to do it. So this is what I've decided. I'm going to cast this on tonight um, as soon as I finish talking to you about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the scarf is called Spring Magic Spring Shawl. And it's a free pattern on Ravelry. Magic Spring Shawl by Katerina Popkova. And I'm going to be casting it on soon. And I'm going to be using this yarn. This is cesium yarn that I picked up at Wool and Folk in October. And the colorway is the library. So 
Tell me it's not perfect for me. It is, um, yeah, it's going to be a, a perfect shawl. And because one of the things that I want to do when I'm there is I do want to go visit the library in Porto, which is one of the most beautiful libraries to visit from what I've heard, along with a train station and the Livraria that's there to the bookstore. Uh, so there's going to be a lot there that I'm going to be um, adding to my agenda to, to see as well. And so, yeah, so this is what I'm hoping to get done. I've got three weeks. I think I'll be able to do it. Will I? We'll see. I do hope to do a little bit of filming when I'm there and I'll share it with you all. Let's see. So I think that's all I have for you in terms of crochet and knitting and my current projects and my upcoming projects and um i hope what i've brought you today was of interest thank you for for staying with me to listen to these yarn ramblings to listen to my ramblings of my yarn makes i am going to add a little bit here at the end some footage of our um, time that we just spent at the cape cod canal we do have a camper and we do try to get away uh, once in a while with it. And we spent a few days down at the canal. There is a campground at Scusset Beach, uh, which is at the start of the Cape Cod Canal. It's a beautiful beach. We did park the camper there for a few days. I did spend quite a bit of time sitting, knitting and watching boats come in and boats leave. I did go to the beach, uh, but more at night to see the sunset. I'm not much of a fan of sitting in the sand and um yeah i hope my little video here i'm not much of a videographer i did do a little bit of, of videotaping as i walked so it might be a little wobbly but i thought you might enjoy watching it so i think that's all i've got for now um, thank you if you've stayed with me this long thank you it was a pleasure to have your company with me again today i hope to get an episode up before the four weeks we do well maybe not because we come back Oh, July will almost be over by the time we come back from Portugal, but we'll see. So thank you for being with me here today. I really appreciate your time. Um, if what I've talked about is of interest to you, please like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. Let folks know about my channel. It, the little bit that it's been growing um, has made me um, very appreciative. Uh, I do enjoy this. Again, I started it as something that I was going to be recording for my boys, but now I'm I'm enjoying watching back and seeing how I've logged in, what my makes are. So until next time, até a próxima. Obrigada. Thank you.
the rocks in San Miguel oh. and just as cold I'm sure. Oh he's so brave. <laughs> 